Clinical Consideration of Treatment Setups In this module, we will discuss how to review and evaluate treatment setups by Eon. Course outline will include the aim and importance of setup revision and evaluation when providing clear aligners treatment for your patients. Then we will talk about the steps of evaluating the treatment setup, which include checking the bite, checking the final position and movement protocols, applied treatments, any overcorrection steps if present, technician or manufacturing notes, and lastly, Eon Inbox. Let's start with asking what is the importance of setup revision and evaluation? Well, this is of great importance to achieve the best treatment outcomes for your patients, as this is the time where you can check all the details of your treatment plan and make sure the goals were met and communicate back with EON team for any modifications required. Remember that the 3D video simulation of the movements will be translated through the aligners into actual movements in the patient's dentition. Thus, movements and treatment goals should be reviewed and studied thoroughly at this step. Now, let's start with how to evaluate the treatment setup. First, start with checking the bite on the treatment setup and compare it to the clinical photos of the patient. Make sure that the bite is registered and set correctly, as this is an integral part of providing a proper treatment plan. The most important views are the front and side views. To check and compare the anterior overbite and anteroposterior relationship and interdigitation. After making sure the bite is correct, it's time to check the 3D video with movement simulation. These four important points need to be checked as per their order of importance. First, we start with checking the final position of the teeth in the treatment setup. This needs to be evaluated carefully from the beginning to make sure the treatment goals are met and the final result is aesthetically and functionally acceptable, as this final position will be translated clinically to the patient's dentition. Next, we move on to check how those final results were achieved. So, we start with checking each movement separately, and then interactions of different movements and any movement compensation expected. Now moving on to the next bit. Let's have a look at the views that need to be checked for each treatment setup when received. First, starting from the left, are the upper and lower occlusal views the front view, right and left buckle views, and last, the posterior view. Always keep in mind this systematic way of checking all your treatment setups. This way, you will make sure not to pass over any detail. So, as we said earlier, we start with checking the final result of the treatment. This is the last step of the treatment after completion of the alignment. This stage should be checked from all views mentioned previously to make sure of the following. Have the treatment goals been met? For example, am I aiming for space closure, alignment, or overbite and overjet correction? Each of these needs to be checked from the most suitable view, as will be discussed later. It is also important to have a look at the total amount of movements achieved. Is it predictable? taking into consideration the bone support and periodontal health in general, especially in cases where expansion and proclination movements are planned. Next is to start evaluating the movement protocol from each of the views discussed previously. Remember that each of the views will be helpful in assessing different movements more precisely than others. For the upper and lower occlusal view, Press on top or bottom on the upper left corner to get these views and check each separately. Now let's see what are the movements that are best checked from these occlusal views. First of all, any movements in the transverse plane, such as anterior teeth proclination or retraction and posterior teeth expansion or constriction. Secondly, 
The alignment of teeth and contact points are also better evaluated from this view. Also, special attention should be given to the presence of any residual interdental spaces at the final step, which are best seen when looking at contact areas from an occlusal view. Other things to be mindful of are the amount of rotations achieved and, of course, the arch form and symmetry of both sides. The second view that we'll talk about is the front view. Press on the front view icon on the upper left corner to get an anterior view of upper and lower arches together, and you can press on upper and lower icons to view each arch alone from a frontal view. This will allow you to check the following. Mesiodistal crown tipping of anterior teeth, intrusion and extrusion movements of anterior teeth, which means that any overbite or open bite changes are best assessed from a front view. Symmetry of arches. As we discussed earlier, this should be evaluated both from an occlusal and front views for accurate evaluation. And finally, to evaluate midline. Moving on to the next view in the sequence. This is the buckle or side view. Press on the right or left icons on the upper right corner to view the buckle occlusion on both sides. This view will allow you to check the following. Molar and canine relationship or any anterior-posterior changes. Occlusal interdigitation. This can be assessed from a buckle view as well especially if intrusion or extrusion movements of posterior teeth are planned, affecting proper occlusal interdigitation. Lastly, the evaluation of anterior-posterior position of anterior teeth and the overjet. In many cases, checking each arch separately from a buccal view can also be important and will help in evaluating several other points, such as changes in torque of anterior teeth, and assessing the curve of speed. When planning intrusion of anterior teeth, it is important to check the curve of speed at the final stage to make sure a flat or slight curve is achieved. The last view in the list that we'll be discussing is the posterior or lingual view. This view will allow you to check the following buccal lingual movements of molars, or any torque changes in molars, and assess occlusal interdigitation and cross-bite correction. After having learned about how to assess different movements from all views, now some detailed attention should be given to the combination of movements planned together. We need to ask ourselves the following questions. Does the sequence of movements and its timing make sense biomechanically? Always keep in mind the basics of orthodontics, treatment planning, and biology of movements when checking the treatment protocol. For example, if a tooth that is severely rotated is in an open bite, it needs to be derotated and then extruded. These movements need to happen in the correct order of derotation and then extrusion as this is more predictable. Then we need to check if there are any problematic bite interferences during movement. And finally, if the rate of movement is acceptable and predictable. Keep in mind that Eon treatment setups are generated following specific staging protocols and specified predictable rates of movements. However, a case-by-case -case evaluation is essential as changes might need to be done in specific cases related to, for example, compromised periodontal support, presence of restorations, or other special conditions. Here, in this table, you can review the amounts of movements applied on each tooth. The last point to evaluate here with a protocol of movements is what we call movement compensation. Remember that the treatment setup should simulate the biological response of the tissues to increase the accuracy of case tracking. What do we mean by this? For example, if we are planning posterior teeth expansion with bodily movement, 
in real life, we will expect to see some buckle inclination or tipping occurring alongside the bodily movement. When checking the 3D video simulation, some inclination or tipping movements in the opposite direction, labial root torque in this example, can be considered and seen as a compensation of what will actually happen in the patient's mouth. Once you are done reviewing the movement and protocol, you will proceed to evaluate the treatments applied, as shown in the figure. Only what is applied in the treatment setup will appear on the screen. We will discuss each one of them briefly. If an extraction is planned, it'll appear in the treatments applied as it's seen in the figure. The teeth that need to be extracted will appear in a different color. Moving on, the applied IPR can be seen either in treatments applied as shown in figure one or downloaded as a PDF as shown in figure two. So what exactly do we need to check when evaluating IPR? First of all, the accessibility of IPR, or the timing. Are the contact areas accessible to perform IPR in the specified step? This is best evaluated from the occlusal view. Second is to check the amount of IPR around each tooth and compare it to the movement. Is the amount of IPR relevant to the amount of space needed for this specific movement? And finally, check for any IPR restrictions such as the presence of restorations or bridges, or the presence of extra space that would restrict the IPR. Another thing to check is the presence of passive aligners. Make sure that what was requested is applied on the treatment setup, done for the correct arch, and properly timed. Also, in some cases, bite ramps are used in deep bite treatment, to assist in intrusion of lower anterior teeth. Assess their location and check if the lower incisors are in contact to assure their function. In cases with tooth size discrepancy, if you have requested for spaces to be left, check that the amount of space is appropriate, or if IPR was done on the opposing arch, check all the points mentioned previously. If you have requested elastics, check if the hooks and or cutouts are placed in the right places. Attachments are appropriately placed to avoid any interferences, and finally, if their timing is correct. Then we move to checking the placement of attachments, which will be indicated as green buttons on the treatment setup. So what are the important points to consider when checking attachment placement? type of attachment, and relevance to movements applied. So, we need to ask ourselves if the attachment placed is helpful in the specific movement applied. Next, have a look at the size and location of attachments. Double check and make sure no attachments were placed on teeth that should not have them. For example, where attachments placement is restricted. Lastly, Make sure that the placement of attachments will not cause any severe interferences. Note that in many cases, attachment interferences cannot be avoided and might be accepted during a few steps of the treatment setup, such as in cases of crossbites and deep bite correction. Generally, if there are no restrictions for attachment placement, it is recommended to keep and follow EON's recommendation for attachments as shown on the treatment setup video, as those are designed and placed individually for each case in a way that achieves best predictability for the movements. Whenever you request a pontic in a treatment setup, ensure it's applied for the right tooth. As shown in the figure, it will appear in a different color. Going forward, let us evaluate torque enhancers. They are placed only on anterior teeth either to preserve their buccolingual inclination when retracting them or to change it whenever is needed. Moving on to another feature to evaluate is the rate of movement. The rate is applied depending on the case type, movements, and the periodontal status. So, for example, if the periodontal condition is compromised, a slow rate would probably be applied. In some cases, 
we resolve to high rate for certain movements when the number of aligners is limited. This is decided and applied by EON Treatment Planning Team and will appear in the applied treatments whether the rate is normal, slow, or high. After that, we need to evaluate overcorrection or the need for this if not applied. Overcorrection is the planning of movements beyond an ideal or final position. This is done or planned when you would expect certain tooth or teeth to lag behind. Overcorrection steps are usually requested in refinements where difficult movement or space closure is overcorrected as a means of increasing the predictability of getting to the final desired result. Overcorrection steps will be identified in a different color in the steps bar towards the end of the treatment, as shown here. One helpful feature while checking your treatment setup, which is worth mentioning, is the superimposition feature, as shown here. The blue shadow shows the initial position of the teeth. This is helpful to visualize the total amount of movements achieved in each view. Lastly, we need to review the technician and manufacturing notes. You will find any added elastics to the case, type, teeth included, cutouts, and buttons. Also, you will see if torque enhancers are added, if full fabrication was requested, attachments change in refinements, or teeth extracted from the setup. Now, let's move on to the last part, which is communication with EON team. This is an extremely important part of checking your treatment setup, as some specific notes regarding each treatment setup will be sent from EON team through the EON inbox. In return, you can communicate any special instructions, modifications, or requests through those messages. This is the most efficient way to enhance communication between doctors and EON team. Some important points communicated from EON team to doctors through inbox include case type changes, for example, upgrading the case from light to unlimited, applied auxiliaries, comments about unpredictable movements, advice for certain changes in treatment setups, comments regarding impression or bite quality. This two-way communication between the dentist and the EON team directly through messages will simplify and speed up generating treatment setups with better quality outcomes. Always keep your comments specific and explicit for any modifications required. This will avoid any misinterpretation of the comments. Thank you for watching.